Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to take a look at this here, which is the SparkMaker uh, SLA 3D printer. This was uh, sent out to us at no cost for our consideration by our friends at Banggood. So, thank you Banggood. Anyway, a year or two ago, I built a uh, another 3D printer. It was the uh, Anet A8, which was the... Uh, you know, they melt the hot plastic and squirt it out model. And the one thing about that printer that I particularly didn't like is the infinite amount of things that you have to adjust. There's just one thing after another that moves and has to be perfect for it to work. Well, the beauty of a printer like this is it only has one part that moves. And that is the z-axis right here the actual printing takes place down here in this little tank which you fill up with resin it shines um, an LCD up through there then it cures it using UV lights I mean it's a wonderful technology and just a couple years ago this technology would have cost you thousands of dollars thousands this is the lowest cost, you can't even see my hand going over there, can you? This is the lowest cost uh, SLA 3D printer on the market, the Spark Maker. And it sells for just a little over $200. Is that amazing or what? Now, granted, you will have to buy your own resin and stuff, but you know, you're probably going to do that anyway. So if we take a look here, this knob, this black knob right here, which if I power this up, will turn green this it's an encoder with a, a clickable switch that is the only control on the entire thing and basically all it does like this is move the z-axis up and down below it is an SD card holder the only other thing you can do is click it to start printing now it does have one other function which is to update the firmware and this is where the story gets funny so I've had this printer for you know three or four days now and uh, the first thing they tell you to do is to update the firmware and to update the firmware you copy this firmware update file it's called update-fhd.wow you put it on the SD card you put it in there you press the green button it turns purple for a couple minutes and the update is done well I tried it I tried it three different four different ways I even bought different SD cards to make sure that I had the right kind of cards you say you have to use a C10 type card and nothing would work well the reason it wouldn't work is because I had the wrong model of printer. There's the Spark Maker and the Spark Maker FHD. There is no labeling on this printer whatsoever. I mean, there's a, there's a little uh, serial number on the back, but it doesn't really tell you anything. So from the pictures that I was looking at, the original Spark Maker had the word "Wow" printed on it here, and it says it has a plastic tank. Okay. Well, this is. A metal tank and it doesn't say wow there so that matches up with the spark maker FHD the high definition version the highest definition version so I'm trying to put in the update for that well this is not it this is the original spark maker here's how I found out the spark maker FHD uses files that end with dot FHD the uh, original Spark Maker ends with WOW files .w -o -w. So after I couldn't get the update to go, I thought, well, all right, what I will do is I will try to uh, just print something, just see if it prints. So I uploaded a test.fhd and nothing. I would press the green button and it would just blink green. So I thought, oh, just, you know, just for grins, let's try a WOW file. I put this card in right here that you see is back I press the button and by George it starts working this is the original spark maker and that's fine 
but there's absolutely no labeling whatsoever. And then let's take a look at the manual they sent. And by the way, the manual's phenomenal. Here's the manual. Let me look at how many pages this is. And it just says, you know, Spark Maker Operating Guide. Just, we're just going through here so I can show you. It doesn't really tell you anything. It just says over here. See, Spark Maker 3D printer with the WOW. It tells you basically how it works, how to test it, different parts. But I mean, this manual is phenomenal. I have never seen a manual from a Chinese company that is this good. incredible so anyway we have it ready to go now pretty much I think but the one thing we have to do here is to level the bed so what you do is you just roll this well why don't we just do it okay so the instructions say let's take this off here this is the uh, the print head thingy bobble. Comes with the Allen keys and it says you have to loosen these guys up here. They're pretty tight in there. Which is good. We don't want things to be loose. Yes, I hear a train too. Anytime I start a video, a train comes. Wow, those are really tight. Hold on. Okay, I got it loose now, you can see. So we put it back on the machine like that. And we'll turn it on. Let me roll this down here a little bit for you. What we have to do is put this down as far as it'll go. I know it's not very fast. I'm sorry, this is a boring video, I realize. Okay, that's as far as it will go. And then it says we have to hold it down with two fingers and tighten these up. So let me do that. Okay, so I got the bed leveled in there. Everything should be just about ready to print. Now you might have noticed when I first brought this out it comes with this. This is to block the UV light that might get in there so the resin doesn't cure. Now another thing that made me believe it was the FHD model was that you can't find the SparkMaker software on their site anymore. That was for the original. Um, the FHD uses a Cheetu box which they recommend you download right off their site. So, I don't know. I'm stupid or bad documentation, but either way I got it working, I think. So, like I said, it didn't come with resin. So, I bought some resin. This is uh, from Elegoo, I believe. Elegoo? Yeah. Uh, this is the gray. And it's UV wavelength 405 nanometers. And it gives you some information here on the box. Couldn't find it here. Uh, yeah. Exposure parameter, first layer exposure 20 to 60 seconds, normal exposure 5 to 15 seconds. So the reason you want that long first exposure is so that it's that the first layer sticks to the build plate real well. That seems to be the problem with these. But we're gonna try it out.
All right, hopefully we got everything ready and right and good to go. So we will pour some of the resin in here. Not sure exactly how much we're going to pour. Some. It says no more than 240 milliliters. See how that levels out in there. Well, that stuff is thick. That is really thick. Let's see if that's enough. Seal that back up tight. Put the print head on. Lower it in. Put the top cover on. And hit the go button. Ha <laughs> the plate just went into the resin. So, now we wait. I have no idea how long. I can see the uh, UV curing going on there. Nope. Oh, I'll be back in a few hours when it's over. Let's see what we got. Looks pretty good so far. Alright. I'm going to be careful not to uh, get any of the resin. All over the machine. So we'll get it cleaned off and have another look here. All right, the print is outside curing in the sun. Now we just need to clean out the resin vat. Two screws are all that hold it onto the main plate and then it just pops right off. And we'll drain it through a filter here. Cleaning up pretty nice. Just don't want to have any chunks when I pour this back into the main bottle, that's all. You can see the clear FEP film there on the bottom. I know it looks gray now because, you know, we've been working with it. But it is clean or clear. You can see there, there are some chunks. And that's what I was trying to avoid when I want to put this back into the uh, container. So we'll save the leftover resin and clean out the vat. Okay, so there's the vat cleaned out. Put it back together real quick. I 
can find the right hole. So there's our our print. It's a ring, as you can see. We need to clear the uh, supports off of it, pretty much <laughs> like that. There's a couple there on the inside that need to come out, but. Put a stone in there. Come on, focus. That's a pretty cool ring. Way better than anything you could get from an FDM printer. You know what I'm saying? All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all you guys for watching. Big thanks to the patrons. And a big thanks to Banggood for sending this out. That's it. I'm out. Peace.